Hello guys. So today I'm going to talk about uh, my ideas on how to implement another feature that I've seen in a lot of sites. So take this github.com webpage for example. So when you visit it, when you are logged out, this is the page that you'll see. You'll see a default marketing page. But when you visit this page as a logged in user, you'll get a different page. So let's sign in. You see we are still on the home page, but now we are seeing a different page altogether. So you get the dashboard page when you're logged in and you visit the home page and you get uh, the default marketing page when you are logged out. So I'm going to cover how to do something similar in Next.js in this video. So we are going to use uh, cookies as a way to identify if a user is logged in or logged out. So for this GitHub homepage for example, you can see that uh, if you log in, there is a logged in yes flag there. There is also a user session that identifies if uh, you have a login session in this browser window. So we are going to do something similar to this. So this is a, a replication of that UI in our local server here so there is a uh, the root page here that loads a uh, default home page when you're logged out so when you click the login button you'll get the login view where you log in with your details and then when you click on the login button it will log you in and then redirect you to the home page so if you look at the application view in your console you can see there is a login cookie that we set here where we just set the username to the person who was logged in so this identifies the logged in user so to determine if a user is logged in we are going to check with this value and then if it's set we are going to show the dashboard view otherwise we'll show this default view and if you look at my file structure here notice that i'm using the next 13 app router instead of uh, the pages router so we are going to build the feature for this app router and then try also to replicate the same for the pages router so the first thing that i want us to do is to have a utility that can return the current logged in user so something like a react hook so let's set up uh, a hook in uh, say hooks let's call it the use user hook so we export a default function called use user that should return an array containing the username of the current logged in user so this username is the value of the cookie that we set so the app router has a very useful utility that you can use to get the current value of the cookies so we can find it in the next headers uh, utilities so the utility is called cookies so we can get the current value of the cookies from the store by calling the cookies uh, function so this returns a cookies object that you can read so you can get the username by reading the store dot get username dot uh, value so if the username is defined this will be a string otherwise it will be an undefined value so we can use this hook on the home page so const uh, username is equals to use user and then if the username is set we return the dashboard view otherwise we return the home page so let's save the file and see the effects so if you look at the browser window you can see that uh, this code is working so since we have a user we are showing uh, the dashboard view and if we say delete the cookie and uh, try to refresh again we'll get uh, the default page so if we go to the login page and then uh, log in with our account we should get the dashboard page so this works because uh, this uh, cookies util works on server components only so while the component is rendered on the server we already are able to access the cookies and then are able to get the username way before the page is rendered so if you refresh the page that value is accessed on the server and the correct state is rendered on the server i've simplified it here in that we are just getting uh, the value in the cookie and then uh, returning it but you can do complex stuff here like uh, maybe the value could be a jwt token that you can validate first before returning the user if uh, that value is valid so for the app router this should be enough so how does this look for the page router so what you're going to do is uh, you're going to copy the values of this page component here and then create a similar page in the pages folder so let's call it uh, pages uh, home for example so you're going to just paste that code the way it is there so let's visit uh, the page pages uh, home and see if everything works so immediately you see an error displayed here it says uh, you're importing a component that needs next headers that only works in server components which is not supported in the pages directory so our use user hook here cannot work in the pages directory directory because of uh, this uh, import so we need to find another way to read the cookies so to be able to get cookies in our hook here the only way we can do it is to use an external library that can read and write cookies so one such library is the js cookie so let's add it and then um, instead of uh, using this component here let's 
create a similar hook let's call it um, use user maybe for the pages so you can copy the same code there and then now change this import to be importing from js cookie instead of uh, next headers and then also you're going to change the store to use uh, cookies dot get username which should return that string so what we can do in the pages home directory instead of importing it from use user file let's import it from use user pages file and then we can see how it affects our page so it looks like the errors are gone but uh, the user is not being accessed from the cookies so this actually bugged me for hours and i couldn't figure out why i couldn't access the cookies so because i'm doing the testing here in an incognito tab it doesn't have access to cookies so while looking around on the internet one solution was uh, to go to chrome settings page and then uh, either select allow third party cookies or uh, block third party cookies options to allow cookies uh, in incognito mode but even these couldn't fix uh, the issue i was facing here so what i ended up doing is just to exit uh, incognito mode and switch to my normal browser window and i could finally see uh, all the errors i think the reason that uh, we couldn't see it in this use user hook that we wrote at the beginning was that uh, next year was getting the cookies from the server not on the client so the browser couldn't be able to block it now that that's out of the way let's uh, get back into solving the issues so we are getting an error here saying hydration failed because the initial ui does not match what was rendered on the server so that is one of the biggest issues that comes with the uh, mixing uh, client side rendering with server side rendering so in our pages home page here we are using conditional rendering but the branch that will be executed depends on a value that was generated on the client so on the server the username is going to be an empty string and then on the server it's going to have a value so one way we can fix that is by making sure that uh, this value is uh, executed only after the client has rendered. So you can do that by using uh, the use effect and uh, use state hooks. So we can store the value of the username in a use state hook. And then when you want to set the value of the username, we set it in a use effect hook that will only be executed after the component has rendered. So if we give it an empty dependency array, this will only be executed after after the component has rendered so here we can call the set username function with the value of the cookie cookies.get so there's a type error here so let's fix it so it's wants this to either be a string or an undefined value so that should fix it so if we save this then uh, we should fix the client side hydration errors so so you can see the error has disappeared so let's try to refresh this page to see how it works so one thing you'll notice is that uh, for a split second there was a flashing of uh, content here so we showed the home page for a split second and then immediately switched with the dashboard so is there a way we can fix this so that we don't have those ugly content flashes so one way to to do it is to make sure that uh, this conditional rendering here is executed on the server so that while the page is rendering on the server we already know if we have a user present or not so one way is to turn this page from a static page to a dynamic page so this page is treated as a static page because we are not calling the functions like uh, get initial props or uh, get server side props in this page component so if we add a get server side uh, props function so let's type it so get server side props is an async function that returns an object with a props key which is an also an object but the values that will be in this props key will be directly passed to this home component so what we want to do is get this username prop from the cookies on the server so one of the props that get server side props has is the request object and from this object we can get the username for example from the request dot cookies dot username and we can return that username in the props key here and also make sure to export this from the component so that next.js can get access to it so instead of the hook here we can remove the use user hook and then get the props straight from the username you can also add the types for the props so that uh, the editor does not complain a lot so the props to the home component here so this should be a string so that should be enough to get the username from the server so let's save this component and then see the effect on the browser window here so as you can see as the page refreshes there's no content flashes anymore because now you're accessing the cookies from the server so this is the best way to do it for the 
root component. Make it a dynamic component that gets the values from the server first before calculating what to display to the user. But now we have the problem of the use user hook. So if we have many components down to the component tree, we don't want to do a lot of prop drilling to be able to get this username prop to, to all those components down the tree. So this hook is still okay, but now you have to be careful with how you use it so that you can avoid the flashing of your UI. Let's say we want to display this nav page on the home page and what you want to do is uh, maybe display the user's username if they're logged in and uh, the login button if they're not. We can refactor our page here a bit to accommodate that. So let's return maybe a wrapper, a wrapper section where we can do the check inside here. So if the username is defined, load the dashboard, otherwise load the home page and then above it we can add uh, the navigation bar. So we can remove these uh, early returns here so that we get everything within the wrapper component. So you can see our components above here. So in the nav component, we want to get the username from the use user hook. So for this button here, we just check if the username is defined. We, s we maybe print the username in a spam tag. Otherwise, we display the login button. So let's save this and see how it works. And so we are getting some errors here. I think it's because the nav component is also being used by the app router. So we can't really share it. Yeah, what we can do is just export this into its own component instead of having to fight with the app router. So let's just create a new component called navpages.tsx, then paste the same code inside it. And then in the pages, in the pages home directory, we can import it from the nav pages instead of nav. So as you can see, the correct value is being displayed here, the user's username. So if you try to refresh, you can still see the content flashes. The button is shown briefly before showing the user's username. At least this is better because the whole page is not flashing, just this small section. So for the section that is flashing, what we can do to fix it is to disable SSR on that component. So what we should do is separate this section here that is causing the layout shift into its own separate component and then make it client side only. So we could, for example, create a login status component. So this login status component will now return the conditional render. So we can now call this use username hook here instead of calling it uh, in the navbar. So let's paste it here and then import it. So in our navbar, we can remove the hook and replace this with our login status component. Now the magic you're going to do with the login status component here, because this is what is causing the flashing, is make it client side only. So switch this import to a dynamic import. So this becomes const login status equals dynamic. So this will return the import for that component and then pass the SSR false option. So this will be client side only. So let's save and see how it works. So as the page refreshes, you can see that there's no flashing. So this part will be server side rendered. This part will be server side rendered. The part that was flashing here will be client side rendered. We can just return this component back to its original state where we are calling the cookies.get function directly instead of using the use state and use effect hooks. So this will work for us now because it's being called in a client side component. So if we go and refresh the page again, you can see that there's no flashing at all for that username section of the screen. So to be able to use this hook without flashing, we can leave it as is, but make sure that the component you're calling the hook from is loaded dynamically and SSR is disabled for that to work. Or if you can, make sure that the page is rendered on the server via either get server side props or get initial props. All of them have access to request.cookies that you can do the validation on the server and then return the full user once everything is validated. So that should be all. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or any ideas on what I can talk about next, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching.